Discovery. Welcome to the podcast Discovery Show, the podcast that's about other podcasts, where every single week we have a book club style discussion about a podcast, and at the end of the episode, we're going to recommend a brand new one. I'm Kirk. I'm Zach. And I'm Matt. And this week we're talking about one of Matt's recommendations from last week called Success Express. Yes. So Success Express is a financial help podcast, which is constantly derailed by advertisements. The hosts are comedian musicians Ethan Edenberg and Eric Jackowitz from the Cooties. It's produced by Shawnee Moose, the Gooses Loose Tracy, and is an all things <laughs> comedy podcast. Episode topics include investing, tax refunds, Ariana Grande, Jersey Mike's, passive income, 401k, Post Malone, Barack Obama, Chase Bank, Lil Nas X, SEO, Papa John's Garlic Sauce, Pixar, Money, the Baba Duke, and the stock market. <laughs> Some of uh, some of those didn't quite seem like they were uh, <laughs> focused on finances. Uh, Lil wrong? Nas X might not be, but they all seem... Every, every, yeah. All the other ones. <laughs> exactly. And yeah, the specific episode we talked about is the Ben Jammins with Reggie Watts. <laughs> and uh, I guess we could start with um, kind of some top level. So Matt actually brought the Cooties as a Discovery on Discovery Weekly a couple weeks back and they are a pretty hilarious band. They have amazing production quality and they do really, really funny songs. Yeah. I think my favorite might be raisins on Spotify. Uh, Real top quality stuff. That's the one about Raymond too, right? Is that (laughs) that raisins? Yes. Okay. Yeah. That's a fantastic (laughs) song. We listen to that. (laughs) Um, it's a great and track. yeah, they have everyone. They have listen. Reggie Watts on this episode, who is also kind of a legend at the improvising musicality type of thing. And uh, Kirk, you you were not familiar with Reggie Watts, right? I had no idea who Reggie Watts was. I had heard you and Josh talk about him in the past. Oh, Reggie Watts is amazing! Blah blah blah. blah. I thought that he was like blah blah blah. Stop listening. I, yeah, pretty much. Um, like, oh, sure, whatever. If they like it, I probably don't. Um, and this is all very hurtful. <laughs> so I thought it was some like jazz band or something with uh, the front man that you know sings beautiful soul music. And uh, so. this is giving me the weirdest picture into what you think I'm going to recommend to you. Honestly, <laughs> like he thinks anything I recommend is a beautiful little singer over a jazz band. <laughs> and so I look him up when we're, when we're talking about this show. Um, actually, before I even listened to the episode, I was like, I'm going to listen to some Reggie Watts. So I, uh, I just went to a Spotify and I started from the top and I was like, this is not what I thought it was going to be. <laughs> and but it's I'm so interesting it. you went Spotify first, too, because, like, uh, for anybody who doesn't know, Reggie Watts is a pretty incredible live performer. He has some, like, he performs in a way that there's a couple people slightly like him now. But when I first saw him, I had never seen anything like it. It's like a mixture of comedy and improv, but he's a very technically, like, incredible musician. Because, and I actually read a little bit about him, uh, kind of in preparation for this, he went to school for this, you know, he, he had trained, um, on the piano and the violin, and then he studied jazz at the Cornish college of the arts. See? And he eventually <laughs> went on to be in a funk Beautiful band. Jazz musician. Of, <laughs> he went on to be in a funk band in Seattle. They call it Neo funk. Um, they were called Mac tub and they're awesome too. Like he's, he's a really talented performer. And he just has these shows that are off the wall. It bounces around. He'll switch accents. He will do these crazy. A lot of times he messes with the idea of words. And so he will literally just do like gibberish for an entire performance. And he'll do it in gibberish that sounds like different languages. And you're just like, what am I listening to right now? (laughs) But then at the end, you're like, did you just make an entire set out of gibberish that sounded amazing? And he does. (laughs) <laughs> like it was so, and that's why when you said that he was on one of these, I was like, okay, please let's go. 
Well, and yeah, he's also so, got uh, some Netflix comedy specials too. Spatial is one of them. And I can't remember the oh, yeah? name of the other one. Pretty great. Really, really big uh, production. Uh, that, that one, Spatial. Um, but uh, this episode, huh? What do you, uh, <laughs> what do you think? And, and it's funny because we, we talked about this a little bit before we recorded um, it is all over the place as far as like, <laughs> there's not really a central theme going along. It's mostly just like them improvising. And first of all, it sounds amazing. Like, oh, it even, does. It was really good. Yeah. It's even the quality. like kind of for them. And, and this is improvised, correct? Like the whole yeah. thing is just, they, they get together, they improvise it. It sounds amazing, especially for what they're doing. And there's, there's a song that we've still had stuck in our heads because it was so catchy as they were doing. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so basically, and I, I, I wrote that note before I even got very far into the episode because I put, are these songs live? And obviously they were uh, later on. I was like, oh, okay. So all of this was live the whole time, the, the music they were playing and stuff. But I didn't even get it to later. I even told them, I was like, I thought I was looking at the wrong show. I'm like, <laughs> This sounded like a comedy show that you wanted me to listen to, but I'm finding this financial show. <laughs> no. so what, why, what's the disconnect here? And the disconnect is this show is not about finances. Yeah, that's, a little bit. that's the bit. The, the Literally, their show description is a bit because it ends up being a bunch of improvised songs that are fake advertisements. And it's hilarious. Yeah. Um, pretty good. It took a while on this episode to figure out that that was what they were doing. <laughs> I don't blame you. Um, I think I, I said that uh, Reggie Watch is such a such a force of nature that everyone kind of deferred to his chaotic sort of uh, uh, way of doing it. <laughs> that we didn't really get that solid structure in this episode. But I did listen to ones afterwards and was like, Okay, this works really well, like really well. Um, but but this episode they was, act like they're going to talk about something pretty intense, and they're like, "Okay, we got to we got to go to another ad." Well, no, they actually they improvise the bits a little bit more into actual interviews in the other episodes. <laughs> like people that come on are actually like, "Hello, I'm uh, the one I listened to had some guy that was." running for president and they were doing this improvised bit of how one of them was just like, Oh yeah, you're the president now. It's like, no, you can't just do that. <laughs> and then they would do the bits in between. And it was really, really understandable, <laughs> like really great. Cause he'd be like, Oh, what do we have to go to a, an advertisement? Yes, we do. All right, here we go off to an advertisement. What is this one? Oh, it's this. Okay, great. And then they would improvise the thing. But this one was definitely hard to follow. <laughs> So Reggie Watts's like character was like selling a book or something. And <laughs> yeah, okay. So this wasn't a real book, right? Right. Or was it? it? No, no. I don't know. No, no, no. Was, I don't I think he has a book. No. It got to the point where I was like, I don't know what to believe. <laughs> is that even Reggie Watts? Or is it someone acting like they're Reggie Watts on their show? I don't even know. Is this is this their real names? <laughs> Always keeping yeah, no, guessing. Funny. He he does use accents a lot. So like he sounded different like five different times in the episode. <laughs> he he definitely made it uh <laughs> made it tricky. But Matt also mentioned after that they get like their prompts from reviews. So uh, you can like prompt them on what these fake advertisers are going to be by literally giving that to them. So that's also just another really cool thing. And I will also say going through the view, the reviews was really fun because everyone's in on the bit. Mm -hmm. All the reviews were like top-notch financial advice. I'm selling my house tomorrow. <laughs> love it. This advertiser, blank name, would love to have a sponsor spot. And it's just so great. I love communities like that. Linens. Tortellini linens. That is yeah. by far the catchiest one. Yeah, tortellini linens uh, got got me for sure. No, but it's really funny to kind of hear all of this. I don't. I don't know. It's it's something I've never really explored. Is this? How did you first find out about this podcast, Matt? Well, I had followed the Cooties for a while. I met them, so they actually got like quote unquote discovered by Reggie Watts when mm -hmm. Reggie was part of uh, Jash which was like a comedy collective of Tim and Eric, Sarah Silverman, Michael Sarah, 
um, and others that I can't think of. Um, but there was this big festival out in Palm Springs and the cooties were brought on to play and they like, you know, blew the doors down. It was so good. And everyone's like, we got to follow them. So I follow them and they performed a lot at this theater that I was a part of working with in, in LA. And then, um, basically I was just on Instagram one day. They do amazing Instagram bits, by the way, the cooties, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> Man, I wish we were good at that kind of stuff. I know it's so. <laughs> I'm. It makes me mad <laughs> seeing them sometimes. But but uh, then one day I was like, "What the hell is Success Express?" <laughs> they just like posted about it and not like said what it was. <laughs> and then I'd, I'd watch and I go, "This is kind of funny," but because they actually have their YouTube is they film all of these and put them out. Mm. So. I imagine the Reggie Watts one was way more fun to watch than just specifically listen Um, because he's crazy. But um, yeah, I'd see clips. Is there music like Reggie Watts music, like that kind of music? So they do a lot of like, it's very quick. Like they, they lay the foundation of the music very fast. It's like the drummer is Eric who's on the show. Um, and he'll very quickly lay down a beat and then Ethan will very quickly lay down a rhythm thing and then they'll just build off of it like that. Pretty much what Reggie Watts does, just he does it by himself and without instruments. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, he was just, he just picked him up because it was like, he saw the value in it having done it, I think. No, and it's funny because I did see they had on their YouTube, um, I think it was called Intergram Live. <laughs> <laughs> it was an Instagram live video and they had Reggie Watts on there and Reggie Watts is really incredible at like making instrument noises with just his mouth. <laughs> but one time he walked out there with a saxophone, but didn't play it and just like made the <laughs> saxophone noises while holding a saxophone. <laughs> so it's just all like ludicrous, but it's also really good. Like the cooties do have really great production quality on everything, but to get that kind of a sound off something live and improvised is it's really incredible, honestly. And you can tell they're really good musicians, mm -hmm. too. Like, the guitar, uh, right, so good. Right? Like, so good. Yeah, they had Slash. They had Slash come in and <laughs> play the solo, right? right? <laughs> Slash played the solo for uh, not Tortellini Lemon, Linens, but uh, the other one. <laughs> uh, what were some of the other ones? Smash uh, Palace they did? Bash Room was one of the sponsors, Tortellini Linens. Which was a which was a room <laughs> that you could rent out for $35 an hour and it was just <laughs> filled with things you could smash um, and and destroy. And which, that's honestly that's not a bad idea. It's pretty fun. Yeah. That sounds pretty cool. Well those exist. Those are uh, those are called they call them rage rooms. See, didn't know that was a thing. I remember in high school they brought in a car and they'd let you pay $2 or something. So you could hit it with a bat. Yep. And one of our friends almost gravely injured his hand. With yeah, the that was bat. the last year they did that. Yeah, they stopped doing it because they were just like, this is why we can't have nice things. And I, how do you hurt your hand while you have a baseball bat and you're hitting a car? I don't know. But this he did. is why we can't have nice things. A destroyed <laughs> car and a yeah, baseball it's, bat. It's the nicest thing. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, it's a really, it's a really interesting podcast. And like, I don't know, a have you ever done anything like that, Matt, where you do like kind of musical improv? Yes, but it's never to that. You see, I feel like whenever you improvise music, you lose quality on either the improv or the music it, just innately because you're either focused on making the music sound good or you're focused on making the improv good. And these guys are able to do it so well. I'm always so envious of that because it's like, I can, I, it's one or the other, you know, we, we used to do this NPR kind of thing that behind the music where it would be like someone interviewing us and we would uh, play the songs. They'd be like, wow, here you are again after the long, that long, you know, time apart. And uh, here you are, here you are playing your favorite song to play wigs and wigs and tea kettles, you know? And then you have to improvise a song. Then you have and, to make yeah. that song. <laughs> but it's so much simpler because I, I don't know, how, you know, I can't play a hundred different things and make it sound really great. It's just like a guitar and it, mm -hmm. you're playing kind of like foundational stuff. But these guys go so in depth. I'm so impressed by it. It really is crazy how effortless they make it seem. 
because it you really if if you didn't know you really would question if they just improv this or if they just had a bunch of bits they came into the show with because it really is great and i mean <laughs> yeah. you can tell that it's mostly made up because you can hear giggling periodically <laughs> throughout the entire episode <laughs> yes. which is amazing <laughs> i will say i loved the laughter because it just really made me feel like i was part of it <laughs> <laughs> it does. It really it, does. It, it is a really fun show for this. So, like, if you're if you're into Reggie Watts or things like, it, there's th- this has become a little more popular with like Mark Rebier is starting to hit it a little bit. Mm-hmm. He's kind of similar where he's just kind of improving something and making up ludicrous lyrics. But it's got like, I feel like the key foundation is the music. You're like, wow, that's actually really good. You're saying <laughs> ridiculous things right now, but this is yes. good. Yeah, and, I think that is something that takes it to a uh almost like an uncanny level because you're like oh yeah i'm jamming to this and you're like wait what is he saying again <laughs> yeah yeah that, that was literally my first way i found mark rebier is exactly that thought process but like i was thinking about it and i think and i actually just saw he was a guest on there but whose line was probably my first exposure to mm. this like premise of just like and they weren't worried all at all about the musicality of it it was all about the improv of it you know They'd just have like one lady on piano and she'd play like standard kind of rhythms and patterns and things like that. It was all about making up the lyrics. But Mark Rebier had Wayne Brady on there the other day. And I was like, well, this is probably like a dream of his because these guys were doing it quite a while ago of kind of making up this type of thing. So it's always kind of been there. But it's cool to hear people that are so good at it. And I love the super meta level of trolling they're doing right now. (laughs) That it's like financial advice and then everybody else is kind of going with it. And then it's literally just ads the whole time. And I, I don't know. I just love the all of the premises behind this are just perfectly executed to be hilarious. Yeah. Everything was tongue in cheek and it was great. <laughs> it was it was great. I really do just love any sort of art medium that brings like everybody along with them. You know, mm-hmm. this the more you buy into the fact that it's a financial podcast. <laughs> the funnier it gets for everyone, you know? <laughs> yeah, I mean, that, that reminds me of some of the stuff we're going to talk about in Discovery Weekly that you were looking into. Um, just oh, a little yeah. teaser, because that's going to be great, because it's, it's just like that. The more you buy into it, the more fun you have, you know? Um, yeah, no, they have built a, a really funny community around <laughs> this that really does add something to it. So, yeah, really, really funny show. If you like funny shows if you like music you like improv there's a lot of there's a lot of great things here and i will also say just scrolling through they have a lot of episodes like a lot of them and for anybody who is familiar with any of these comedy improv podcasts they got some pretty good guests like john gabris who's on comedy bang bang and has that um that podcast high and mighty um really great funny guy he's on there zach rhino from uh off book is another one of the guests and they have a really famous really well done music improv podcast um off book and uh i was just very impressed by the guests and i'm definitely going to keep listening to this podcast because it's fun it's 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 a very fun podcast but yeah there wasn't a heck of a lot of takeaway when it comes to like (laughs) content for that episode but in general, you know, we talked about a lot of different things about the podcast because, yeah, it's a really an interesting concept, too. I don't think I've seen very many. There's been a few, but this is a an interesting take on uh, on a comedy podcast. Yeah, it's a hard thing to do to improvise music like that and to say, hey, we're just going to that's all we're going to do. And so it's it, it is more rare to see it, but they they just really nailed it. And I think that meta-ness that you're talking about really, I've always found that being someone else, like a character, is really helpful to coming up with stuff. So it's just really interesting. It really is like a master class in improv. Yeah, no, it was great. So I have a recommendation for next week, and it's a show that I listened to a little while back. I listened to a few episodes and Man, every single episode so far has been really entertaining and interesting. It's called The Secret Room. And it's kind of similar to like Risk, where it's people that are telling a 
basically a lifelong secret um or something that was a secret that was kept from them so i listened to one and this guy uh he went his whole life not knowing and he just kind of vaguely remembering something that happened to him when he was a kid he gets married he tries to have children can't have children goes to the doctor blah 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 there's they're like you you something's going on whatever and come to find out he had had cancer when he was like four went through chemo and everything and, and his parents and nobody ever told him like all of his brothers and sisters knew his parents knew they didn't tell him. And like, there was certain things that happened to him as he was growing up that he didn't know why they were the way he was. Like he couldn't play sports or he couldn't do this. He couldn't do that. And now looking back, everything made sense because he had freaking had cancer and basically gone through radiation. That is crazy to think and about. He didn't know it was a crazy story. Um, and then there was another one today where a, a, a guy when he was younger saw a fight and literally somebody died. And then it was just this crazy story and he had never <laughs> told anybody. But the one that I'm recommending is episode 132 intentional community. And this one is great because uh, it's about this this woman named Karen who wanted to hike the Pacific Crest Trail, but uh, she stumbled into a cult <laughs> and she ended up living there for a little while. And it's a really crazy, amazing story. What? And it's a really cool podcast. It's, uh, it's a good one. That podcast. sounds amazing. I can't wait for that. Do they have musical improv? I'm just kidding. They, they do not have any musical <laughs> improv. Okay, he's out then. I mean, out. You only listen to that. <laughs> Wow, that's crazy. No, that sounds awesome. Yep. And remember, there's more to discover. Always. All right. <laughs> I'll take that again. <laughs> no, we're good. <laughs> there's more to discover always. <laughs> shows like it at oddfixnetwork.com.